Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. Today we are going to be talking about an issue that's going to be on the ballot in November. Question three, ranked choice voting with John Sarpolis of the Nevada Policy Research Institute. That's next on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. Big R is Northern Nevada's number one golden fire wood pellet supplier. More heat, less ash, 100% natural, and no additives. And there's only one place that stocks this many wood pellets, and that's Big R in Sparks, Winnemucca, Fallon, Fernley, and Lovelock. A river of wood pellets at Big R. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their home. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the heat back on today. Call us today and we'll fix it today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why freeze for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your furnace fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. We're going to play a little 90 second video that explains the issue we're going to be talking about today with John Sarpolis of the Nevada Policy Research Institute on ranked choice voting. How does ranked choice voting work? Ranked choice voting, also known as RCV, is an election system where voters rank candidates on a numerical scale from their most favorite to their least favorite. But who wins? The candidate with at least 50% of the vote wins. But what if nobody gets 50% of the vote? With RCV, the computer system will calculate which candidate had the least number of votes and reassign those votes to the voter's next choice. If that second round of tallying still doesn't produce a candidate with 50% of the vote, the cycle is repeated in a third round. And if necessary, a fourth round. Didn't choose a second favorite candidate? If you didn't completely fill out your ballot and the system needs your next choice candidate, then your ballot is considered exhausted and basically thrown out. That means with each passing round, less people actually have a say in who is elected. So much for every vote counting. Vote no on ballot question three. Your opinion matters and your vote should count before our election system becomes a confusing mess that strips you of your vote. Stand up against ranked choice voting. We're here on Nevada Newsmakers. You just saw a video on ranked choice voting produced by the folks at the Nevada Policy Research Institute. And very happy to welcome the president of the Nevada Policy Research Institute, John Sarpolis. John, thanks for coming today. Thanks, Paul. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's great to have you here to talk about this. So tell us a little bit about question three about ranked choice voting and where we're at today. So question three, this is a constitutional amendment. It will be on our ballot on November 
2024 general election, and it was already on the ballot in 2022. So it takes two times to pass a constitutional amendment. It's already passed once, passed by 52% the first time. It is back. If it passes this time, it will be how everyone in the state of Nevada votes for all races below president. So starting at the U.S. Senate, U.S. Congress, our statewides, governor, controller, attorney general, et cetera, and our state legislature. It will not include the counties or the locals. So if this passes, and we'll explain how it works, and I think it's a crazy way to run an election, but we'll get into that. And there's two parts. It changes the primary, and it changes the general election. So what does it do for the primary? So in the primary, it takes and it eliminates the parties. There's not a Democrat ballot, Republican ballot, or some of these other parties might have a ballot. Most of them don't. Most of them have conf um, caucuses or conferences but puts it all together on one ballot. So Democrats running for, one, for, for an office will be there, Republicans, independents, So you could have anybody. two Democrats or two Republicans you could in have, general You could election. have a thousand of each. Okay. There's no limit, and it's just open to the top five win. So whatever ends up being the top five, they advance to the general election. Takes away a lot of the party control of things. And, you know, this was something that was funded by a bunch of progressives from the nutmeg state who, I mean, how much money did they spend on this? They spent $22 million. $22 million and from it, some Connecticut liberals to come in and change how Nevada votes. Right. 20 now, million of the 22 was out of state money. Only 2 million was raised here in Nevada. And yes, it all came from Connecticut, New York, uh, Massachusetts was quite a bit of it. It, it does have some George Soros funding in there, but it's progressives, they think that this is a good idea. So let's go back to the primary. So they're gonna create this open jungle primary. This is a California style primary. What I would prefer to see, and, and here's one of the problems they're, they're solving. If you saw some of the $20 million they spent on ads, the majority of them were this. It was a white, 30-year-old male saying that I'm a military veteran and I can't vote in the primary. Well, that's a half-truth. It's, I'm a military veteran and I don't want to declare my party, therefore I can't vote in a primary. But let's think about what primaries are. They're private, closed groups. A Democrat Party, Republican Party are private institutions, they have nothing to do with the government. So they say you've got to at least say you're a member to vote. But they don't want to declare that. Okay, so we have more independents, people registered as independents in Nevada, than we have Democrats and Republicans. So as a group, they're frustrated because they can't vote in the primary. But let's remember that you can register the same day. You can go in, declare sure. a party, vote, and switch. Hey, I did that in 2020 to go and vote for Bernie Sanders in the caucus. Just have some fun with it. Now, it's crazy. They let me vote, but they never changed my registration. But I was able to do that same day registration there. So. Absolutely. So it can be done. So then there's the next alternative, and that's open primaries, but not a jungle primary. So you still have a Democrat, Republican ballots, separate ballots, but you can go in and ask for the ballot you want. You don't have to declare you're a member. That's what I'd like to see us move to to fix the problem is just on election day, you come and say, I want to, or if you're going to request by mail, you request and the ballot And they do that in want. places like New Hampshire, correct. right? They do that. Yes, correct. New Hampshire is completely open primary. You just go and pick the ballot you want. So, John, it's not like this is a brand new thing that has never been tried before. You know, let, let's, uh, let's talk about some of the, some of the history behind, um, ranked choice voting. Okay, so going way back, 1890s, 1900s, this was tried throughout the United States and a, a bit in Europe. And it, it was so confusing and unpopular because people were frustrated with not understanding how everything was counted and the outcomes were not predictable that it was eventually gotten rid of. It's also recently been passed now at, by the same leftists from, from Connecticut area. Uh, in Alaska and in Maine, 
Uh, but it's also been used in some local elections. For instance, San Francisco has had it for over 20 years. Oh, they're doing a fantastic job there. Absolutely. I mean, that's part of their problem is how they elect people. So it, it's not working. So you have the primary part. So they want the open jungle primary. Everybody in one hopper. And this is for every, every race that's going to be run under this. As I said, not the president and not below the state legislature and kind of ballot order. And then it's unlimited amount of people there. And then it's the top five. So then you get to the ranked choice voting part, which we saw the video a little bit earlier. This is how you vote in the general election. And first of all, it's, you have to then choose, in order for your ballot to be fully filled out, you have to pick, you have to rank the top five. Who's your number one pick, your number two pick, your three, et cetera, et cetera. And those are rounds. Well, hell, John, I have a hard time getting to number one. I mean, how am I may get to number five? Right. How do you, it's hard enough for most people to look up the judges, look up who the, who's running in your district for state legislature, your state senate, your assembly person. These are hard things to figure out. Who do you like? What yeah. do they stand for? Now you have to really look up all five. That's the first thought. Here's where I get bugged by this. Okay, we are based right now on a plurality system. You don't have to have 50% to win. Lombardo won with 49% for governor. And then the next candidate had less, and the next candidate had less. This says if nobody gets 50%, you go to another, a next round. You're ranking these five people when you're voting. If you're going in or casting a ballot by mail, you're filling out all five rounds at that moment. You don't know who's going to be left in the second round So or it's the not third like a round. runoff election like it's they have in a, a lot runoff. of places right. in the South. Right. You know what happened in a runoff, and you get to make a decision based on where it's at at that moment. This is not a runoff. This is ranking in advance what you think of, of the five that are up for All right, John, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to describe exactly how that process works. We're talking ranked choice voting on Nevada Newsmakers with John Serpolis, and we'll be right back. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. We are talking ranked choice voting. It was on the ballot in 2022. It's going to be back in 2024. We're here with John Sarpolis, president of the Nevada Policy Research Institute. John, let's talk about what happens, you know, with that vote. So you were explaining before the break, you go, you vote for your top five 
choices out of however many names are on the ballot. And then in the primary, what happens in the what happens in the tabulation? OK, so then you get to the general. So there are five candidates and there's going to be f somebody you really like, somebody you really dislike and some others in the middle. And you have to rank them and you have to rank them for the rounds. You're doing this in advance, as I stated a little earlier. Here's where it gets confusing. So if nobody in the first round gets 50 percent, the candidate with the least number of votes drops off. But then they look at the ballots cast for that least popular candidate and they look at their second round and they take their second round choice and add them to whatever candidates are left. So at this point, if someone gets 50 percent, someone wins. But let's also think about it. These people who voted the least popular now have voted twice. They get to vote again because they did so badly the first time. And why are we allowing the people who are least in line with the public sentiment to get a second shot and then they have more weight in the second round because they're the only ones who get to vote in the second round? That, to me, makes no sense whatsoever. Then, if nobody gets 50% in that round, then the people that were here drop off with these people. And they look at this second round loser's third round choices. And those are distributed, and this continues on. So, John, I can't imagine this is a very efficient process. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's extremely slow. We're already frustrated with it. It's taking 10 days to get our votes counted. Under ranked choice voting, where it's been tried, it's usually three weeks to a month. It has been even longer. It's very confusing. Let me add some other problems to this. And by the way, let's hold the thought on the three fingers, because I'll come back to some other problems here. But back to the count. When it's a race where it overlaps multiple counties, so for, for instance, you're running for governor. You got the Clark County vote. And then you got the vote in Lyon County. My guess is you're going to have a bottom candidate that's different in Clark than you're going to have in Lyon. So they can't start the second round count until they know the count of the state. So they can drop off the worst candidate in the state, and then they can start the second so round count. So let me just ask a crazy question. Why do the proponents think this is a good idea? So here's how it's been pitched, but there's a lot of uh, bending of truths here. Number one thing is they say that it is going to elect more moderates. This is a way to get rid of the leading Republican will be too conservative and the leading Democrat is too progressive, too leftist. And so, well, I'll agree with the second thought. I have a hard time agreeing with the first, but okay. <laughs> that usually doesn't happen too often. <laughs> so you're going to get people's second and third round choices moving up in the later rounds, and therefore you're going to get more of a mushy middle person who's going to be easier to work with. This is how they've sold it to many trade associations, that we're having trouble in the legislature because we can't get consensus it's too far left or it's, well, it's not right because there's a, there's a, they're a minority. And what they're going to get, you're going to get somebody who's a little softer, more moderate in the middle. This is one of the things they're saying this won't do. This also, underlying, not said out loud, this is going to give less power to the parties. Both parties, Republican and Democrat, are opposed to ranked choice voting and because it will give them less control. How do you run a campaign when it's, well, what are we going to do on the third round when you're trying to guess? Yeah. So you're doing a lot of manipulating. But it can also open it up for manipulation. In states where there's a predominance of Democrats, let's say, or where we have a lot of union control in our, in our elections, they're the ones knocking the doors, getting out the vote, they can do a little more manipulating. They, they, they can probably play with first, second, maybe third. The other thought is, which I didn't get back to, let me go back to my fingers. You've dropped off a couple. So now you're looking at people's ballots in this next round, when this candidate drops off. Have they voted all five? 
often people will pick one or two. But think about it. If, if, you've got, if you're kind of a Republican, and you've picked the Republican number one, a different Republican number two, and you're not repeating these in each round, you can't put Lombardo in all of these all the way across. You have to have a, a different one of the five. By the time you're getting out to the fourth and fifth round, you're picking people that are probably of a very different mindset of your political beliefs. Yeah. And so maybe you're holding your nose and doing it. Maybe you're saying, forget it. I'm not putting them down. So by the time you get to the third, fourth rounds for sure, people have not filled out the ballot completely. When that happens, the ballot is considered exhausted and it's thrown on the side. So those people are not even going to get their second round of votes as those who were the first ones to drop off got their second rounds. So it's a narrowing, constant narrowing. If nobody gets the 50%, you're going to have more and more exhausted ballots or in other ways to say it, people who got to vote twice and people who didn't get to vote twice. And that's just not fair. Why should some have two votes and some have one? All right, we are talking the pitfalls of question three, ranked choice voting, which is gonna be on the ballot November of this year. We're here with John Sarpolis, and we're gonna be right back on Nevada Newsmakers. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. It's a good time to eat. It's a good time to play. It's a good time to win. Ooh, you get times to the casino industry drove Nevada's economy for decades. By the 1990s, however, the state's sole industry was in sharp decline. Many were losing their homes, many were leaving the state. Is Reno on track to be the Detroit of the West? was an October 2010 Reno Gazette Journal headline. Nevada knew it was time for a change and a time to diversify. Story County took that lead, took risks, invested tens of millions transforming its desert into a place of opportunity and a future for Nevada families needing something new. That desert now provides thousands of high paying tech, advanced manufacturing and energy careers at companies like Tesla, Panasonic, Google, Switch and Redwood Materials. Story County transformed Northern Nevada forever and the tide of opportunity has raised all vessels through construction contracts, high paying careers, and the power of payroll. Tens of millions have been generated in sales and property tax, permits, and other revenues for Reno, Sparks, Washoe County, and for all of Nevada. Enough, in fact, to generate a surplus after public services are provided. And best of all, a sustainable economic climate has been created, enabling our children to stay in Nevada and live prosperous lives in their home state. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. We are gonna wrap things up here with John Sarpolis president of NPRI, Nevada Policy Research Institute, talking about ranked choice voting. All right, so John, this seems like an absolutely crazy, very inefficient way to run a railroad. You know, I guess a trucking guy could say, <laughs> right? Um, so let's talk about where people can go to learn more about this and what they should do if they think this idea is absolutely bananas. First off, more information, lots of other videos to look at, printed materials, downloadable materials, things that you can hand out to your neighbors, 
talk to people about this, go to npri.org slash RCV, Ranked Choice Voting. If you put in search Ranked Choice Voting, it'll come up right away. So that's a source and a resource. What you can also do is sign up at npri.org, get on our email list. We'll be sending information about Ranked Choice Voting from now until November. It will build. You will also be seeing different organizations having ads run, things happening about this. This is a matter of explaining it to people how confusing it is. This is difficult to count. Mistakes are made in counting this because it's not easily understood. We're kind of leaving it up to the algorithm to do well, that. It's crazy, it's gonna be a John, mess. because there's so many people on that progressive side who say, we want voting to be simple. You know, hey, you don't need to show an ID. You don't need to be registered. You show up, you vote. And this is anything but simple. This right. absolutely complicates the process, not just to vote, but to be able to count it. Right, and then you're out there counting on your fingers and all of these races and trying to figure out candidates that you've never heard of or can't stand and you gotta hold your nose to vote for them. Well, I think that would be my biggest problem. Like I said, I have a hard time sometimes getting to one, but hey, I'm in the business. All right, uh, John, thank you very much for coming on. Once again, where can people go? NPRI.org, thanks. NPRI.org, all right, thank you. We're gonna be right back on Nevada News Maker. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real, it's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to carsoncitygreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. 7 at 7 is a newscast built for your smartphone. It's a 7-minute newscast available every weekday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. at LVRJ.com. We don't waste your time and we give you the day's top stories. We at the RJ have noticed some similarities between us and a certain BTS character, RJ. Plus the latest in Las Vegas business, weather, health, and entertainment news. 7 at 7 streaming now on your smartphone. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suite. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. To watch today's show or any of our past shows, you can go to NevadaNewsmakers.com. Thanks for watching and listening.